You're still watching Ways Down, the International Day of Sports for Development and Peace, which happens on the 6th of April, presents an opportunity to recognize the role that sports and physical activities play in communities and in people's lives across the world. Sports have, um, has the power to change the world. It is also a fundamental right, a powerful tool to strengthen social ties and promote sustainable development and peace. And well, as well as um, solidarity and respect. Now, through our unique individual skills and collective power, we have come together to share creative ways as a UN to improve health and well-being throughout uh, through sports and physical activities, even from the confines of our very uh, homes because of uh, COVID-19. We still have COVID-19 to deal with. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we all know, I mean, one of the major things that was really affected during um, the initial lockdown was um, sports, you know, people couldn't go to, to do sports anymore. So, exactly. Yeah, so I'm very happy that, you know, somehow it's coming back to life because sport has always been, I mean, Nigerians can disagree on everything, religion, but football, culture, but once there's, up, we just all brings come us together. All together. And I wish the government can actually harness that mm -hmm. and, you know, create, you know, I was just talking to, I was at the salon on Saturday and I was talking to some people, I was saying, why can't we have proper football academy where, you know, you can actually just take a ticket and just go and watch. I mean, there are constant plays like the Back way you in have. the days, it used you know, to be say, like they that. They still you have. can go to the stadium and actually have, sit down, buy a ticket and watch. Yeah. You know, I remember my, my uncle. my mom and my dad used to go and watch football. My mom lost football. My uncle was a, is a football fanatic, mm. you know. He used to, when he was dating my auntie, he used to take my auntie out. Uncle Adiodi is a shout out to you. He used to take my auntie out to watch football back then in Benin and it was fun for them basically so it's like a, a date a date night out or a date mm. day out something like that so you can actually do something like that mm -hmm. but because of the fact that the federal government of Nigeria is looking at sports as a long-term goal they won't actually pump in a lot of money as they should compared to what we had before absolutely yes. absolutely all right so Mari I'm gonna to come to you what's your favorite sports first if I take your news I like I like tennis and I like football because my husband likes football. <laughs> we all we, we all do that football thing in solidarity. The only person that I know <laughs> mm -hmm. that genuinely likes football, without whether there's husband or there's husband, I don't like is football. Faith, my sister. But interestingly, mm -hmm. our, so the entire family, Gam, they're I know. all football. But if I, you see I'm... the children analyzing football here, I should bring them on the show one of these days to come and analyze sports for you. Football. You'll be blown away. I'm not You'll interested be blown away. <laughs> All right, Maury. So, what did you find for us in the news today? Okay, so I, I, I also come bearing COVID vaccine news. Um, the federal government on Tuesday said an additional 100,000 doses of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has been received from India. The announcement was made by the chairman of Presidential Task Force on COVID, that's um, Mustafa Boss. Um, the vaccines donated by the government of India to Nigeria will help boost the number of Nigerians to be vaccinated by about 50,000 more, he said. That's about what I have on the news today. And I'm still here reading and sharing vaccine news without having collected the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting why they are collecting yes. more doses of Astra mm -hmm. AstraZeneca when, when they just announced that they, don't that want they want to move from silently move from AstraZeneca to, to Johnson, Johnson & Johnson, Johnson because uh, the, the challenges of AstraZeneca being two dose and all of, and Johnson mm. & Johnson just being one, one dose. dose. So why are they still collecting AstraZeneca? Mm -hmm. Federal government of Nigeria. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, because I feel like Nigeria would rather take what we have than, you know, mm -hmm. wait for what we're not sure of. Well, that's but but have you, have you, has any of you collected the vaccine? No. Because, I mean, I've been hearing that people have side effects. It goes on that two days, but I honestly don't think that I have two days to spare. I don't know if that sounds right, because <laughs> you hear people say they were very sick for two days. They couldn't move their hand. They couldn't move their hand. But it's relative, though. Some people actually didn't have any side effects, you know. While some, people some people actually, actually fell actually ill dead. for a week. Yes. Some people did not fall ill at all. At so all. It's actually... It's it depends so -so. on the body, yeah. Yeah. basically. Yeah. Well, let me talk about my news. My yeah. news. <laughs> you know, our president is... Uh, he, he, he went, um, what do you call to it the now? UK. He went to the UK. And currently, he's back on Twitter, where people are, you know, bashing him again, Maury. So 
And in this case, he, he, they've, they've talked about the fact that he went to the UK. They've talked about the fact that he, um, 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 re, he um, what's the word now? He just got a new guy. Um, what's his name oh, now? Oh, the IGP. The IGP. And that's yes. my story. Yeah. Yes, that's his story. <laughs> so he just got him to, you know, replace the yeah. uh, former um, the IGP. IGP. Yeah. So, but the one that actually caught my attention is the story about him traveling out of the country and that the state of the um, clinic in Asso Rock is not good enough mm. to take care of him. Now, why did this actually get my attention? Because they said that they had spent 13.59 billion budgetary provision for the state house clinic. Mm -hmm. Now, if they have spent so much in five years, why wouldn't that state clinic be up and running? Hmm. Why would he have to go abroad? And besides, this was just a, uh, a simple medical checkup, uh, like routine Precisely. checkup. So why can't and they handle from the it? From what was said, um, Aisha, Buhari, Aisha Buhari, the, the first lady, and the daughter Zara said that even Panadol, even to get syringe in the hospital or the clinic, hmm. is not there. So what are they doing? With or what did they do with 13.59 billion hmm. Naira? Hmm. Okay. We shall ask them when we see them. <laughs> you see these people? It's heartbreaking. I'm not even interested. It's, it's, no, you see, anytime I take news on Nigeria, I, I leave the whole thing getting very upset and getting very emotional about it because it's so painful that so much has been invested in the system and we're not, we're not getting the anything Absolutely. out of it. Absolutely. It is well. Will we continue talking? That's why we're here. He said we should not be hopeful. Keep saying. I'll keep saying it. In <laughs> it's time for All strategy. All right, so my story says breaking news. Buhari appoints Usman Akali Baba as new IGP. Hmm. Now, he has appointed him. He was deputy um, in inspector general um, before. He was uh, now, he's now appointed as acting inspector general of police. And if you remember, if you recall, um, he had given an extended tenure to the former IGP, mm. you know, uh, of police for three months period. So I'm wondering why didn't he wait for the three months to elapse? Before. Yeah, before in, um, appointing um, the new man, the uh, Al-Kali Baba. Meanwhile, the former IGP was in um, emo state trying to sort out one or two things. Of in course, terms and of accusing... What actually um, happened. Accusing, uh, what's it called? The... IPOB. IPOB. I mean, <laughs> what... <laughs> you know what, we are going to talk about oh. that later. <laughs> Accusing IPO. But I'm happy that they've appointed, um, what's it called, a new IGP. And according to the report that I, I heard, he's already talking tough. He's already bringing out plans, rolling out plans to, you know, to curb insecurity in Nigeria. I so just... hopefully, let's pray that he um, actually does, you know, um, get, gain some... Um, what's it called? Gain grounds. some grounds, you know, when it comes to fight against terror. I just hope. And I'm also, um, of course... Definitely, agitations are, mm -hmm. all, are also flying here and there. Mm -hmm. Why is he a northerner again? But the truth mm -hmm. is, I don't know. I mean, he's been in the system. He's the deputy, so I mean, mm -hmm. it's only automatic. Normally, ideal situation. He's mm -hmm. supposed to be the deputy that's supposed to take over. You know, the ideal situation. So we're just hoping that you know. This thing that happened in the east. Why would it, if it had happened with um, the former um, service chiefs, we would have said, oh, he's the former service chiefs. Now we have a new set of service chiefs mm. and we'll still have the same problem, incident happening. Incident happening. Well, this we, thing has we really can't. This time and time and time We again. really can't exhaust so much of this, but you know. Let me hear, Maury, do you have anything to say? Because you always like good news. Anything that he said. It's okay. <laughs> I really don't have anything to say. I mean, like, he has started, you know, putting plans on God. We can only hope that he truly executes them because planning is one thing and acting on the plan is another thing. So I'm hopeful. Exactly. Well, just, I'm let's very... just be hopeful that this appointment truly, you know, brings um, some form of relief in terms of security and, you know, we actually gain grounds when, uh, with the, the war against um, mm. insecurity and terrorism in this country. Nigeria. All right, so we're going to take a break now. When we return, we're dealing with the, we're analyzing the comments that um, the Biafran um, leader made, that's um, Inam Dikano. That's our conversation tonight. So it's our ladies' night out. You can also, we're going to open mm. the phone lines at some point so you can call in. Stay with us. We'll be right back.